Howdy folks, welcome back to the Rafter K Rustics Workshop. You know, I've got a project that I've been wanting to do that would be better done with a wood lathe. Or maybe I've just uh, been wanting to try to make myself a wood lathe, so I came up with a project that would require one. Maybe it's one of those chicken and egg things. Anyway, that's what we're going to do today is I'm going to make a wood lathe so I can complete this little project. We'll probably, I'll probably show you how I do the project later. Before we get started though, I have been told by my attorney, the offices of Skeeter P. Snively and Associates LLC, I think the LLC stands for low legal quality, but anyway, he told me I got to read this letter. make it look official. To whom it may concern is legal counsel to the guy in this stupid video. I am compelled to address the safety or lack thereof inherent in the making and use of this so-called wood lathe. I shouldn't have to say anything about not trying this at home, but if you are watching this channel for any reason other than to see what an idiot this guy is, you are probably the reason lawnmowers have warning labels telling people not to put their hands and feet near the part of the thing where the blades are spinning. Therefore, heretofore, forthwith, and party of the first part accepted, please note the following. This so-called lathe is being made for entertainment purposes only. There's no way it can be done safely. If you attempt to make one at home, you may only lose a few teeth, but we cannot guarantee you'll be that lucky. You'd have to be a total knucklehead to even consider anything this dumb. Sincerely, Skeeter P. Snively, Esquire. Gee, Skeet, you ever want to think that maybe there's a reason why people don't really like lawyers a whole lot? So let's get into it. This is the Reve base of the lathe. Um, I'm not going to give you dimensions of it. I'll show you what the parts and pieces are. But really, I pulled the dimensions out of my stink wrinkle, and I don't know if they would work or not. I imagine after I've used it a couple of times, I'm going to change things anyway. But you get the idea of what I did. So, the platform here has three grooves or channels that I cut in it, hither and yon. Those are for the, uh, the, the tool support to slide in and out to the workpiece. This slot back here is for the workpiece support so that it'll slide in and out to adjust for different size pieces. Right, the next two parts of the lathe are this, the uh, tool support. And you can see it's got two layer thickness of three quarter inch plywood. There's a little rabbit here that receives the base itself. This piece is just to add some more support, make it more solid and stable. And I put this metal sheet on here so that over time the lathe turning in this direction, pounding the tool into it, wouldn't dent up the wood and make me have to make another one. It just got, you know, wouldn't get all worn out. This is the workpiece support. Um, it consists of double thickness of plywood here again rabbited to receive this base and then I created a slot that slides on to the base here and these holes line up with the slot so that when you slide it in and out to the different workpiece sizes you can then screw it in and make it good and tight the workpiece is actually supported by this little screw now I took the screw and took it over to the grinder and uh, pointed it this way so that the workpiece would go on here but not thread up and get sucked into the, the stand because that would pull it off of where it attaches to the drive. So to secure the workpiece holder and the tool support and everything else on here that is going to be taken on and off, so it's going to be loosened and tightened. I didn't want to use 
lag bolts or wood screws or anything because those have, over time and things would wear out and it would get soft and it just wouldn't work anymore get sloppy instead a friend of mine a while back gave me some table legs from his church that they were throwing away and those tables were held together with these contraptions here it's a little nut that inserts into the wood and then you got a bolt that screws into the insert you can buy these at I know you can get them at true value hardware you can probably get them at Home Depot too but I got them for free so I got to use a bunch of them now this monstrosity was gonna be powered by my little angle grinder it has some cool things about it that made it interesting for it one it's got a pretty powerful little motor uh, number two, it has a this little nut that holds the grinding wheels on that also had four holes drilled in it already. So all I got to do is put some screws, little wood screws in those holes, screw it on, and then the, I could use this, the wood screws to screw into my workpiece and hold them in place for turning. Another thing kind of cool about this was how easy it would be to mount this sturdily to the base. You can see this little bolt knob sticking up here actually screws into the handle hole on the grinder. Then I built this little housing that's held in place by those furniture screws. And I've got a situation where this is perfect is held squarely and it's held very tight I don't have to worry about jumping around now that looked like it should have been a pretty workable solution except for one little tiny problem and that's that that thing spins at about 12,000 rpms which is enough that it could fling a piece of wood hard enough to knock me into my next vacation so uh, I didn't think that was a big deal all I got to do is find a way to reduce the speed. Now, with my limited knowledge of electric motors, I thought, well, all I got to do is get like a fan controller, you know, those little three-stage high, low, medium things, and that would reduce the amperage going into the grinder and therefore slow down the motor. Apparently, that's not how it works. From what I figure now, what happens if it gets down below a certain amount of amperage, the motor just will not operate so I ended up being able to slow it down a little bit but not nearly enough to make it so I was willing to stand next to the thing and, and try and turn anything as my friend Rich says safety third with that in mind let me introduce you to the Widowmaker I bought this radial arm saw from three fingers cabinetry when it was going down out of business about 20 years ago. I asked the owner Lefty why he was going out of business and he said that the bulk of their safety program was that every time someone lost a finger they had to change the name of the company and that was getting too expensive. I'm not sure if the three is what's lost or what's left but what I do know is that this beast came without any guards and if it grabs a piece of wood instead of cutting through it well a finger's the least you can expect to lose. I finally got a sliding miter saw to replace it, so it's just sitting here as a pretty dang scary reminder of how much dumber I used to be than I think I am now. But this beauty, like a crazy ex-girlfriend, has some pretty dang sexy features. First, it has a threaded shaft that holds the blade on, and it turns in the right direction for a lathe. Second, it has a table built onto it that can support the monstrosity I made. Third, and even more important, it has a really strong motor that turns at only 3,800 RPMs. That's still too fast, but it's getting there. And D, the motor adjusts up and down and back and forward. And I'll show you why that's important in a bit. On the downside, the motor requires the workpiece support to face the opposite direction from how it is now. So I'm going to have to build a new one, but I'll show you how it goes together. So we have the base of the lathe pretty much put together. I have a good power source for it, but we still have the one little piece of candy corn in the punch bowl. And that is 
getting the speed of the workpiece down enough so that I don't get my noggin cracked trying to turn it. Now, the easiest way to do it would have been had my idea of the uh, little fan controller work, but it didn't, which, eh, oh well. I guess I could have taken that as a an omen that this isn't such a great idea, but eh, like I told my doctor, I'm not a quitter. So, I'm going to try something that I do understand better, something more mechanical. This is the place where the redneck renaissance manhood rises to the top like a Snickers bar in a kiddie pool. What I'm going to do is take a small pulley and put it on the main drive shaft of the radial arm saw motor and I'm going to get a bigger pulley to put on a shaft that's going to directly then turn the workpiece. I have this old drill press that really doesn't work hardly anymore and this is a point where the borderline hoarding of tools that I've been accused of is going to come into play because as we open this beast up what we have in here are two things that are going to help me a lot with this lathe. The first one is this multi-stage pulley. One, two, three, four, five different sizes and a belt. And this comes off, generally all it takes is a uh, little hex wrench to get these off and maybe I'll have to pry it a little bit. But let me get that off and we'll show you what we're going to do. So here we have the pulley off of the drill press. This is just an old pulley that I think I replaced on my table saw and kept it because I don't throw stuff away. Now, remember that geometry math stuff that you're always laughing about how you never use it anymore that you did in high school? Well, boys and girls, break out your acne and your uncontrolled libido because we're going back to high school. The circumference of a circle is pi times diameter. Remember that? So, the inside of this pulley, here the smaller one, is an inch and a half. That means that if you multiply that times pi, you're going to get somewhere in the neighborhood of about four and three quarters inches. Or, if you want to say it differently, a point on this belt, when this turns one time around, is going to move four and three quarters inches or a point down here at the same time is going to move four and three quarters inches. But while that's one full rotation here, it's only about a third of a rotation of this larger pulley, this one here. So we've just cut the speed of our workpiece down from what 3800 RPMs to about 1266. All I got to do now is figure out how to mount this to a shaft that then attaches to the workpiece and that's what we're going to do here in a minute. So here's how it all goes together. We take the pulley that I got off the old table saw. Now one thing I did have to do is uh, take my deburring tool out a little bit of my grinder and clean this up a little bit make it a little smaller because it's tapered so that it fits tightly on a shaft. I don't want it to fit that tight on here because it'll screw up my threads if I ever want to use this again. So I just made the tapered part a little bit smaller. It is then held in place by a reverse threaded nut. Got that good and tight. Right. The hard part was coming up with a mechanism to hold this pulley firmly and securely in place but allow it to spin freely. What I came up with is this block of wood that I had just a piece of scrap in the shop that I drilled a hole through and that's going to be what's going to hold the shaft. Now one thing cool about this pulley, if you can see it, it has a square cut out at this back end, which I had not realized was there, but it's like a gift because what I can do now is take a carriage bolt that has a corresponding little square cut up at the head of the bolt slides in fits perfectly and that engages the pulley which 
boy that makes things easy problem next though is that now it's too sloppy because the bolt that has the proper square on it is only five sixteenths and the hole through here is a half I fixed that a couple things one is I first I made this little spacer out of wood I think it's I don't know what kind of wood it is but it's real hard wood it slides into there that just keeps it a little bit tighter next I went to the hardware store and I bought these two pulley or two uh, bearings um, if I remember correctly it was the pair of them were five dollars and fifty cents that puts me when you add in this bolt and a couple of other little things that puts me in almost eight dollars in on this deal and so I can't quit I gotta make it work next I'm going to take a couple of washers you can see there's this uh, cut out in here recessed area so I'm going to fill that with washers the reason is because hard to see but this bearing has this the part that turns is this part that sticks out here just about I don't know an eighth of an inch so I don't want the pulley going up against the part of the bearing that doesn't spin so I just put those in there to space it next to make the bearing because you see the hole in the bearing is a half inch I spent another 55 cents a piece on these little nylon bushings and then I had to drill them out to 5 16 they actually fit really tight onto the bolts let me screw this on one of the beauties of having these little spacers screw on so tight like that is that once they engage with the bearing and spin freely they're not going to migrate up and down the screw anymore like they would if they were just form fitted or loose so next we go into there and the next step is applying this one on this end all right got that little sucker rod screwed in there so it's recessed now put the bearing on pulley seems to spin well next I'm not sure why I'm doing it but I'm going to put another nut a little square nut on here just to kind of secure it and make sure things don't bounce around too much the last part is how I'm going to attach the workpiece onto this shaft and that's using this I just put a cut this little piece of plywood oak plywood it'll thread on here and then it will get held on by a lock nut so here's the beast I did go ahead and complete a new workpiece holder that faces the correct direction the block with the pulleys attached to it I just uh, used some big deck screws to hold that in place just to try it out and see if it's gonna work if this works and I'm gonna use it I think I'm gonna make a new table and I'm gonna put some slots for that block that has the pulley on it so that I can move it in and out so I can change the pulley location to speed up or slow down the workpiece but overall it's almost scary it looks like it might work let's see what happens This may actually be bad news, boys and girls, because this means I may actually have to try it with a piece of wood in there and a tool and see if I can actually cut something. Well, if you're not too squeamish, uh, hang on for a minute. I'll show you how I'm going to attach the wood that I'm going to be turning. And then, um, boy, um, I guess I'll give it a shot. Uh, before we do though, uh, there is a couple of house cleaning things I need to do. Um, we always say, you know, you, you should subscribe to the channel and, and like the video and make comments and stuff and all that's great, but you know, for some reason the Academy has been overlooking this channel for the Lifetime Achievement Award for quite some time. And, 
Yeah, I'm thinking this video may actually put us over the top. I think they should seriously consider us. So uh, instead, or in addition to liking the video and all that other crap, uh, you know, send a letter to the Academy. And in the letter, just put uh, a link to this video and title it uh, Lifetime Achievement Award Submission. And I think it's just like sending something to, uh, to Santa Claus. You know, you send Santa Claus North Pole and it gets there. So I think you just send it to uh, the Academy, Los Angeles, California. It'll probably find its way there. And you know, just for you guys that are not bilingual, you maybe haven't been around it as much as I have, but um, it'd be interesting to know that uh, Los Angeles is actually Spanish for the Angeluses. And it's, you can tell it's multiple Angeluses because Los is the multiple or plural of L, which is boy. So now you also know it's a boy Angelus, but there's more than one of them. That's opposed to, for example, Las Vegas, which is Spanish for the Vegases, but it's girl Vegases because they're Las instead of Los. Which is all makes sense until you start trying to speak Latinx, at which point this becomes Lex Angelex, which is the same number of Angelexes, but now they're gender neutral. Kind of like a Ken doll or Beto O'Rourke. Anyway, this is the kind of stuff that you get at this station or this channel that you don't get in other places, and you're welcome. To hold the work piece on, what I did is I went ahead, I made the X's across the diagonal of the piece and drilled a real shallow hole on this, the small end here for, uh, for the holder side. And for the part that actually screws and holds it to the pulley, I made a bigger one that's the size of the lock nut. So what I'm going to do is I made this little fixture kind of thing here where I'll set the piece on top of the lock nut and that should center it on the workpiece holder. So all I'm going to do is I drilled some holes, I'm going to put them these pieces here, 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 this here, screw all these in and what should happen if life is good is that these are going to be strong enough to hold the work pieces it turns and the other end will hold it from coming out of here it's three quarters of an inch it'd have to move so I think it'll probably be pretty good it's not a real elegant way of doing it but if I'm doing you know four or five of something you know all I gotta do is pull this out put the other next one in so we got the work piece mounted in couple of adjustments I'm going to have to make to make this thing work, but I do want to try it before I put any more work into it. So let's get back over here. Ooh, that works pretty good. Busted out teeth, no black eyes, no broken ribs, and I didn't even cut my hand. This is this is pretty close to a successful outing here. Um, there's some things I'll have to do differently. 
I think some little adjustments. I did mention one thing. I want to make the mounting block here uh, adjustable so that I can change speeds, even though that was more than as fast as I think I'll ever want to go. Um, I do need to make an adjustment as to where the the sled is that supports the tool so that it doesn't get in the way of this little holder. And I need to get some proper turning tools. Uh, when we do the new project, that'll be in the next couple of weeks, uh, just a little teaser. Uh, we got a dining table and some chairs from an estate sale. And the chairs, there's like two of them that match and two of them that are totally different and then one of them got broken. So uh, I want to make a couple of chairs and the spreaders on those chairs actually need to be turned. So we'll show you how in a couple of weeks here, I guess I'll, I'll be doing that project and show you how I made the dining room chairs. Uh, in the meantime, uh, don't forget to send those letters to the Academy. Um, like, subscribe, do all that crap. And if you have any ideas for something you want to see me do, I don't care if it's in the kitchen, I don't care if it's in the shop, I, whatever it is, you know, give me an idea. I run out of ideas. I'm about as creative as anyone else. So let me know. And thanks for watching.